Okay, welcome to another iPad painting tutorial. On these tutorials, I try to make it as simple as possible, break it down step by step so that you can follow along and hopefully make realistic, almost photographic looking landscapes a little bit more straightforward. So I always use an iPad and I'm using the app Procreate. Having said that, you can probably adapt this tutorial to a different tablet and a different app. However, the specifics of Procreate, I've opened an A4 canvas default settings and the brushes I'm going to be using again all of the default settings I don't change them at all are within the airbrushing the soft brush it's the larger soft brush don't mistake it for the soft airbrush that is lower down I'm going to be using the medium brush again with an airbrushing I'm going to be going to the artistic brushes and using the leatherwood brush and within calligraphy I'm going to be using the script brush in terms of the colors I've already pre-selected some colors here. Each of these colors has what's called a hexadecimal code that represents each of the colors. All of these codes are down in the video description. You can type them into this area where it says hexadecimal one at a time and press enter. The color will appear up here and then you can start to piece it together yourself. Or you'll also find next to the codes a link to my Patreon and you can download the whole color file for free. You'll also find links for my Instagram and a Facebook group and a TikTok. So if you have a go at this tutorial, you can tag me on Instagram you can share it with the 35,000 members on Facebook and give and receive feedback. And obviously I'll get to see it and give feedback too. And with all that said and done, let's get started. So on layer one, I'm gonna to go to my colors. I've got this first color here. I'm simply going to drag and drop that color so it flood fills the entire canvas. I'm not gonna change layers for this next part. I'm gonna go back to my colors, to the second color. I'm gonna to go to the brushes, the airbrushing and the soft brush at the top not the soft airbrush, it's just called a soft brush. I'm gonna put it up to 15% size and 100% opacity on the sliders. And I'm just gonna draw a line all the way across the middle, just one line. Then I'm gonna to go to the adjustments at the top, Gaussian blur, and just blur it in with the slider all the way across to about 70%, like that. Then I'm gonna create a new layer this time. So we're on layer two, go back to my colors, I'm just gonna skip a few colors. I'm gonna come back to them in a moment. I'm gonna to go to this color, this pink. I'm gonna stay on my soft brush, but I'm gonna reduce the size to a much smaller size at about 8%. And I'm gonna go again in the very, very center, just draw a line across, then back to my adjustments, the Gaussian blur. I'm just gonna blur it in to about 25%, like that. I'm gonna create another layer go back to my colors and I'm gonna choose the third color along this time. And I'm gonna stay on the soft brush, but I'm gonna reduce it down considerably to about 2% size. And I'm also gonna reduce the opacity as well. So the strength of the color is gonna be much reduced to about 15%. And I'm just going to do some slight suggestions of clouds that just cut in across the landscape or rather the skies. So I'm keeping it as quite gestural, I'm keeping an angle and I'm letting it break up into small dashes and smaller gestures. I don't want one consistent line necessarily. You can probably hear the, the noise as I'm tapping on the screen. And I do want to create some texture. I don't want to go overboard. I want it to be relatively subtle. And then I can have just one or two fragmented areas that are just breaking away from it as well. And maybe the top edge, I can just go in there and just rough it up a little bit, creates the sense that there's slight more turbulence in that cloud. And once I've done that section, I can perhaps just go in and add a couple of really wispy areas. Let's build these up, get a few of them in the sky. Again, I'm just really scattering them about. I'm keeping my movement of my hand left to right quite smoothly, but then I'm allowing it to build up in taps in addition. So it's the combination of those two motions. So it's the tapping and it's the sweeping. And then you can allow them to join up by going over them a few times. And then I'm gonna turn the brush up to 4% and then turn it really down to about 5% opacity. And then maybe I can just give the sense that we're getting a slight misting of some clouds in some areas as well. Cause you can get a change of consistency. You can get some sense that in places it's really diffused and spread out. And then other times it really concentrates together. So I'm gonna reduce it back down again to the 2%. In fact, I'm gonna put it to the lower end of 2%, not quite one, just nudge it up into the 2%. And then I'm just gonna go back in 
and this should be really a little bit narrower now and again with a general movement across I'm just building it up we're still on the 5% of past day I should have said allowing it to build up really nice and gradually and I can always go back into some of the other clouds if I want to just continue to add some breakaway areas too. And if you really want to make a little feature stand out more, just keep going over it. I do prefer to use the really subtle opacities. You know, texture is something that has lots of subtlety to it. And if you go with a strong opacity and strong saturation of color straight away, you're just going to get a really flat look to it. So if you want to build up believable textures, then I do recommend you put the opacity really low and just keep going over it, something like that. So I'll do for the first section. I'm going to create a new layer, tap on the plus symbol, go back to my colors, and I've got this purpley blue. And if I go to the color disk, you'll see, and we're going to stay on the soft brush, but we're going to put it up initially to about 3%, and then also really quite high at about 70% opacity. And I want the top edge of this cloud to be away from the pink. So I'm going to leave a gap between the top edge of this cloud and the pink area. But I just want to bring in a large cloud mass all the way across. So initially you don't have to be too precious about it. We're just letting it sweep all the way across. I'm just creating some lumps and bumps. And then we can go back in and further refine it. So we can allow that to just sweep across. Something like this. Then put it up to about 4%. And I'm just going to do size and just do the next section below it just to pad it out just to make it significantly thicker then i'm going to reduce it back down to about two percent size the lower end of two percent and we're still on the 70 percent opacity and i'm just going to go into some of these shapes now some of these bumps that we've created and just start to further refine them so if i zoom in just a little bit i don't like to do this really zoomed in because i'm all about trying to create the overall effect and if you want to go into extreme detail, then you can do that, obviously. But for the sake of efficiency and the time that we've got during these tutorials, I just like to do the overall effect. So I'm not going to zoom in like this. I'm just zooming in a little bit. And we're just creating some, maybe some sections that stick out. And we're keeping to this round shape. So you can create some peaks and troughs, so some bits that really stand out, like this perhaps. And then another circular shape next to it. And then it goes down and a little bit that sticks up. And you can just play around with those shapes all the way across. There's no right and wrong for how you should do this. I mean, I guess to a certain extent, you don't want to be too repetitive. So you want a little bit of variety. You don't really want to get a sense that it's too repetitious or a pattern. And you're going to look at it and you're going to know to your mind's eye whether it's kind of looking believable or whether you need to do some more work on it. But obviously clouds change all the time. And there's just an infinite number of ways that clouds can actually form. So there's no right and wrong. So I wouldn't try to copy exactly as I'm showing you. I'm showing you the overall kind of the way that it might form. And then you can create your own actual cloud shapes. So that's just for the top edge. And then for the bottom edge, you're going to turn it down slightly to about 50%. And we're going to get some breakaway shapes. And I'm pressing slightly more lightly as well. And we've got a flattening out at the bottom of that cloud mass. So the lumps and bumps are predominantly going to be at the top. And then as we get lower down towards the bottom part of that cloud mass, we've almost got a flattening and a, a stretched out set of shapes. Now it can still fragment, but we're not going to get quite the same interesting shapes. It's not to say you don't have any variety because you might have a thickening up in one area and then a thinning out in another. And we can always go back in with the eraser as well. I'm going to add some more sections here. Perhaps I'm going to turn the opacity down even further to really do this gradually like I was explaining before. So about 20% that way we can just build it up more gradually and mistakes you can spot as you're going. So if you're starting to get the wrong kind of shape then you can adjust it with a lower opacity just as you go along. Whereas if you put it at a high opacity any mistakes are just instantly look really bad. So I'm creating almost like a second layer here with another section at the top of this band with the more lump and bumps. And then I'll just probably have it merging down in this bottom section with the, the pink and then the horizon. I'm not going to do it all the way across because we're going to have some trees that I think are going to cut in front up there. I'm going to switch to my eraser and I'm going to long press on the eraser. And then if I tap on it, you can see it's also now selected the soft brush for the eraser. 
So that means I can set my size for the eraser. So again, I'm going to do it at 2%. I can't have it at 100% opacity, it looks very strange. So I'll put it back down to the 25%. Same as the, the strength that we're adding colors, it makes sense. And then I can just remove sections of the cloud if I want to have it interrupting, maybe the lower end of 2%. And I can really fragment and break up bits of this cloud back to my brush. And again, we can just really add to these clouds where we think it needs it. Back to my colors. I'm gonna select the second blue color, create a new layer. And I'm going to use this now to start adding some depth into our clouds. So it looks a bit flat at the moment. So I'm gonna put my brush size still on the soft brush at 2%. And I'm gonna put it up to about 60% opacity. So there's not a massive difference between the two blues. So I need to have the, the strength of it up a little bit higher. I'm gonna just put it, make sure it's at the lowest part of the 2%. And then we're just gonna have some slight depth in this cloud by adding hints that there's some highlights along the top. It's just going to catch the light in a slightly different way. Gives it a little bit more 3D effect. Just going to keep it near the top. In fact, I could always put the strength up even higher. So I'm going to put it at 80%. Now it's still on the soft brush. And then obviously it also depends on how hard you press with the brush. So if you press lightly with the brush, then it's going to be much less than 80%. It just that means if you press on quite hard, it's going to go straight to 80%. So I've got some suggestion that there's a bit more variety of texture within that cloud. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to put it underneath both of those two blue layers. So layer six now is underneath layer four. So underneath that layer and that layer. So on this new layer, I'm going to go back to my colors. I've got the two new colors. I've got this pink color, which I'm going to use first again on the soft brush again around the 2% size, but I'm going to put it down to about 40% opacity and just zoom in a little bit again. And I can go around the top edge of some of this cloud, not all of it, but I just wanna create the sense that when we have the sun down here, it's gonna have the biggest impact on the underside of most of these clouds, but it is gonna creep and be shown on just little bits of the top edge of that cloud. So I just want to give it a hint that we've got some of that really highlighted color, warm color of the pink at the very top. And it's better if it's underneath because it doesn't go straight over the blue. It just kind of reveals itself in areas. So you don't need to go consistently all the way along that. It's just meant to be a little bit broken and intermittent. And we can, in a sense, do it all the way along, but you, you're going to leave some gaps where there aren't any pink highlights, something like that. Then I'm going to go to the lighter color and I'm going to use that as well. So I'm going to keep it at the 40% opacity in the same brush size but I'm just going to use that now again, just to add a hint more highlight in places. Don't overdo this. It's just creating a little bit, again, a bit more depth, more like it's actually having various different light affecting it in different ways. Okay. So I'm going to create another layer on top of all the other layers. And I've just decided I need to have a, a more intense pink for what I'm about to show you next. So if we go to the color palette, I'm going to add it here. And if you've downloaded it or you've already referred to the color codes, then it's already always going to have been there for you. But I'm just changing it live during the tutorial now. So using this pink, I'm going to go and use the soft brush. I'm going to go to the layer properties. And you do that by on the layer, there's a little N, tap on there, scroll down. I'm going to change it to the add. And with a brush size of about 10% and a strength of about 5%. And with this, I'm just going to add a few strokes of it to the area where I really want the sunlight to be the strongest. So I can allow it to extend a little bit over here, a little bit over here. Don't want to do too much of it, just a hint of it expanding over this side. And again, over that side, something like this. Just generally want it to be in this area the most, like that. Then they're gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna do similar again, but with this color now, so this yellow. And keep all the settings the same, so it's still on soft brush at 8% size and still at 5% opacity. I'm just gonna add in a little bit of this yellow in addition to the pink. And I'm allowing that to just extend a little bit further across like that. Then I'm going to create another layer and using the soft brush still, so we really are getting the most out of this soft brush. We're gonna reduce it down to about 2% size, stronger on the opacity this time at about 30%. I'm going to change the yellow from that really intense yellow to this more pastel yellow and zoom in just a little bit. And I want the sun to be in this area and to be really quite saturated. 
So I'm gonna reduce it down even further. We'll go for the 1% in fact, maybe just bump it up to about 40% strength. And I just want to get some slight of a wobble of a texture. So I don't want it to be too neat. I want it to be like a nibbled edge all the way along the bottom edge of that cloud. I'm gonna have it stopping about here. And then just as it gets away from this area generally, you're gonna lose that yellow. You may just get a touch of it, but not much beyond that point. And we can do it for all the cloud in that area. So if you have any breakaway sections like this, you can do the top edge of it, and you can also do the bottom edge of it. Again, so just like a nibbled, it's quite loose outline. And we can have just some floating bright yellow sections in the midst of that as well. Just intensifying it a little bit in places, allowing it to clump together to get a really nice, brilliant yellow coming through. We're not gonna see the sun itself. We're just gonna see the impact of the sun on highlights on the cloud. And sometimes that can be just as effective, if not more effective than showing the sun itself. And I'm just gonna to switch to my lighter pink color. Again, on the 1% size, and maybe I can just go in there and, and add a little bit of extending sections as we move further back, and perhaps just maybe outline the bottom edge of bits of this cloud with this pink this time. We're not gonna see all of this cloud because it's gonna go behind some trees. We can get a good sense of it. Okay, I'll come back to that, but I'm gonna create a new layer. And we're gonna do something completely different now. So we're gonna do some of the land features. So we're gonna to go to a different brush. We're gonna to go to the artistic leatherwood brush. We're gonna change to this black color. We're gonna have it at about 2% size and I may also just keep it at 100% opacity. And now we can go in and just create that top edge for where the trees are gonna be. And we don't have to be too neat particularly, certainly with this initial pass. So. Maybe I'll do a line all the way across to represent the horizon line, and it's a textured brush, so it's not gonna be a neat line, but that doesn't matter. Just sometimes useful to have that straight line to work from. And then we can go across, and we can decide exactly where we want trees to stand out, to stick up, and how we want to arrange our composition. And I'm gonna have it dipping here near the center, and then I'm gonna have it raising and rising up on this side something like this, and then I can just go and fill that in. I don't care about the bottom edge of this line because I'm gonna add a really neat, nice blue reflected line at the bottom of that. So I can just go in and fill it for now beyond where I want it to be, because that's not a problem. And then I'm gonna reduce the size of the brush even further to the real lowest part of 2%. Zoom in just enough, and then I'm going with brush marks that rather than going left to right, I'm gonna push them upwards now and it's just gonna help create a sense that there's foliage and tree spikes that are just pointing up on the top of this horizon. And maybe you can just go in and add a few taps if you want a general sense that there's a tree with lots of foliage. And then another one, maybe a cluster. And you can always go in with a sharper airbrush perhaps if you wanted to get individual branches and things like that. So I'll show you that. So we go to airbrushing, medium brush, put it down to the 1% again, what are we on? We'll put it 100%. You can always just go in, create a tree, spike, with some individual branches on it if that works better for you and you can just add foliage to it. And that way you can just get a variety of different tree types. But I'm honestly, you know, I like to do things very much by hand most of the time. And if in truth I was going for the best version, I probably would use the medium brush and, and manually put these trees in one branch, one spike at a time. But in the interest of saving a little bit of time and some shortcuts, then we'll go back to the leatherwood brush. It's artistic leatherwood. And again, we're doing very similar things anyway. It's just a little bit quicker. So if you have some specific tree shapes and branches that you wanna add in, then go for that. But I'm just trying to get us the effect as quickly as possible. So I'm just gonna go in and just tidy up a little bit, slightly refine it, but not too much. And again, we initially make this pass with the brush tool, but we can go back in with the eraser. So because we've had it being used on a certain brush for the brush, so to speak, when we long press on the eraser and then tap on it, you see it's now selected the same brush for the eraser. So we can go back in. We might have to change the slider. It's fine up 2%, put it up to 100%. And we can just go in and we can nibble away little bits just to help create some of these shapes again. So we're not restricted 
merely to adding, we can also remove using the same textured brush. And I'm gonna move across, so we've done that side enough. I'm just gonna do the same thing across here. So back to the positive adding of marks with the brush, leatherwood brush, and perhaps I'm just gonna make some of the spikes a little less pronounced on this side. In fact, I might do this with the eraser. So I want this to be slightly taller and this to be slightly lower down. So with the eraser, I'm going to take away rather than adding. Okay, that will do for the refining of that texture. I'm gonna blur it in very slightly. So I'll go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and just blur it to about 2%. It just softens it, it makes it look a little less harsh. Just blends it with the background a bit better. At this point, I'm gonna to go to selection tool. I'm gonna to have it on the rectangle, and I'm gonna drag it from the top corner, just as far as I imagine I want to show of that top tree section. So I'm gonna clip off the top and set bottom section Underneath that rectangle, you can see that there's a little section that isn't caught within the rectangle. Let go. So now it's only selected that top section. I then can go to the wrench symbol, go to the add and copy canvas. I can then paste it in and you can see that it's put the section that I selected in. But what it's done, it's taken all those separate layers, everything I've done so far. Now that's really useful because now with that layer, I can go to the transform tool I can flip it vertically and I can move it down to create a reflection. Make sure that it lines up as neatly as you can get it, like that. Okay, so with that bottom section, I'm gonna instantly just blur it in a little bit. I'm gonna to go to the adjustments, motion blur this time, and I'm gonna slide it across to the 20%. And it's just gonna make this bottom section instantly a little less crystal clear. It's gonna set a little bit of separation there. I'm gonna to go to the top and create a new layer. I'm going to go back to my initial blue color and with a airbrushing medium brush at around 2% size, we'll leave it at the 100% opacity. I'm gonna find that middle point. I'm gonna draw a line all the way across, try and do it as well as you can, and then hold it and it snaps to an absolute straight line. Just try and get it balanced left and right so you've got a similar distance there as there. It's judging by eye, obviously. If you're not entirely happy with where you've placed it, you can go to the transform tool. Let's tap on it again, there you can see. And you can just move it to wherever you want it to be. So I'm gonna put it about there. So underneath that line, I'm going to switch to my soft brush. And I'm just gonna put it at about 2% size again and 100% opacity. I'm just gonna do another line underneath it just to Thicken it up slightly. Hold it until it snaps to a straight line again. And this time I'm gonna to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and just blur it in a little bit, just so it creates that softer edge at the bottom. And that works a little bit better. Now I'm gonna switch from the airbrush to the artistic leatherwood brush. So with the leatherwood brush, I'm gonna put it down to the lowest, in fact, I'm gonna put it down to 1%. And the strength I'm gonna put at about 20%. And I'm gonna start bringing it in from this side. So I'm gonna get so far, in fact, I'll do it all the way across, but I want there to be slightly more of a gap on the left side than there is the right side. So I can move that line up and down and I want it to be a little bit off. So it's wider here and narrower there. And I'm gonna do the same again. Snap so it forms that straight line. And I'm gonna do that a few times and just keep building it up with this leatherwood brush. And you can do it manually, so you can, if you feel like you're confident with your straight lines, you can just start to build it in too. Your combination of your absolute straight line and your freehand line drawing. And then I'm just going to bring a bit more of it in over here as well. Now I'm just gonna go back to the layer that had the reflection on. And with my smudge tool set to soft brush, 2% size and about 40% strength. I'm just gonna go in and I think I just want to start pushing and nudging down. Again, it's the smudge, so I'm not drawing as much as I'm pushing down what we've already got. And I think I just want to extend some of the, the reflection a little bit. Give me a bit more to work with. We can always narrow that down a bit further actually. So the real lower end of 2%, but slightly sharper and I'm just using that to drag down some of those treetops 
more about a distortion in the reflection really than an absolute accuracy of reflection. Try and match it a little bit. You don't want to go too far. You want to keep it roughly in line with what's going to be above the water as well. And again, we can just go in here and push it around a little bit. Just drag it down, extend it a little bit more. Perhaps increase it up to the slightly larger 2% again, just so it's a bit more dramatic when we do push it. And you can go both ways and go up and down and push some of the purple into the black to interrupt it as well. We just want to really show a bit more distortion along that, that edge. So it goes both ways. Back up to my layers that had the water on and back to the artistic leatherwood brush and back to the blue. 1% size, 20% opacity. And again, we're just gonna add some more of this nice light reflection as it cuts across. In addition to that, I feel like I want to change the edges a little bit. I'm gonna take those two layers that we've just created with the light blue water, merge down, that's created them on one layer now. Now I can go back in with the eraser, set to the soft brush, 2% size and 25% opacity, and perhaps just take away some of these. Don't necessarily want it going all the way to the very edge. Like that. And go back to my colors. And I've got a lighter blue, so I'm gonna use that. And now with a soft brush, set to 1% size and 20% opacity. And I'm just gonna go over some of these lines a little bit, just to bring them out a little bit more. And it's a little bit careful on this section, a little bit tricky. Just try and have your hand so it's gliding across the screen as much as you can consistently. A bit tricky to do that, do your best. So that's going to do for the top edge of the water. I'm going to go to this reflected layer and I'm going to change the quality of it slightly. So I'm going to go to the adjustments, use saturation and brightness, and I'm going to just turn the brightness of it down a little bit. I feel like it needs a little bit more separation. So I'm going to turn it down to about 43%. And I feel like it just makes a clearer distinction between the top and the bottom. Then on this reflected layer again, I'm going to switch to the smudge tool and I'm going to use the calligraphy script brush. And now with this brush set to 2% size and 100% opacity, I'm going to take this bottom edge that is a reflection obviously of the top of the clouds but I'm going to turn it into more of a rippled effect. Now this is, you have to be something really careful about this. So I'm going to just maneuver my arm and hands. I mean, I could do this as well. So I'm going to imagine now that the lines that will run and meet over an imagined point over here, certainly initially. I'm just going to do some lines that cut both ways. You can take that bottom edge and you can just, using that smudge tool, just backwards and forwards, interrupt, drag some of these bottom shapes. And you can have them really extending into quite long lines perhaps. And you can see if you do it a few times, you're just gonna really fragment it, which is great. But we need to keep it at quite almost a, you know, if you have it this way, it's almost horizontal, isn't it? It's just a slight tilt to it. It's easier perhaps if you turn it on its side. If you want to be slightly more dramatic, you could put it at the top end of 2% or even at 3%. So at 3%, you've got some slightly bigger shapes. Keep moving along. Now it's only gonna get you so far, this technique, but it's already created the sense that there's, you know, perhaps almost ripples in the bottom of that water. But again, it's only gonna get you so far. It's useful, but it doesn't do the full job. So what you're gonna to have to do now in some areas, some areas it's working great, but what we are, are gonna to have to do is go back to our brush, calligraphy, script, have it at a similar size, it's about two or 3%. And then we're just gonna go in and we're gonna select the local color. So there's no point going back to the color wheel. Whatever's here now is what we're gonna to need to use. So I'm gonna just press and hold for that color. And now I can go back in with a strength really quite low actually, probably about 10%. And I can just create a sense that we have some exaggerated extension of some of these colors. So you want to make it extending from the color that's at the very edge. So don't pick a color that's back here because it's going to be too dark for there. And I think that's what I've done there. So I'm going to go back a little bit. Pick really a color right at the edge. So we've got almost like a lighter purple there. And that way I can 
then extend it a little bit further. Doesn't seem too jarring. Seems believable that it would perhaps have more of that color coming out into this area. Turn it up on its side like this. I just think it's a little bit easier to work with. Doing lines up and down is a little bit just more natural for me. Some of these shapes can undulate too. I'm gonna to turn it up to about 5%. The good thing about this brush is if you press more, it gets wider. If you press less, it gets thinner. So you can use that to your advantage now. Press, release, press, release. So I'm really helping to build up this texture by pressing and releasing, pressing and releasing, and that way we get a nice variation, which really works to our advantage. And you can just obviously change your technique as required, but I find that this combination, press and release, and it just creates that wave type variation that really can look quite effective. And you just do this as much as you feel is necessary, build up the effect. And you can also obviously use the light color and you can do the same the opposite way around. So you can build some of this blue up into this darker area too. And then maybe just fragmenting into little pieces as it goes further up. I can also perhaps go in with my smudge, set to the script, and do something similar if I wanted to with the black areas up here, just to soften them in a little bit just to continue the suggestion that we have this ripple this wave and you can really drag some of that across it's going to help sell the illusion a bit more extend that across keep doing that a bit more it's really going to help like that okay i'm going to go to the top layer create a new layer i'm going to continue using the script but i'm going to use it on the normal brush so i'm going to go to the calligraphy script and I'm going to change my color to strong black. And now we're going to create some grass that just interrupts the bottom of our scene and with a size of about 5% and opacity at 100%. We're just going to go in now and we're just going to flick in some blades of grass at the bottom and obviously they're blades of grass so they can overlap. You can just get a layer of grass initially without any real effort. It is pressure sensitive so the when you press at the beginning of the line you're going to get thicker you don't need to press too much though just a natural brush stroke is going to create that effect for you we can allow it to really clump together but we get more grass obviously and some maybe some shorter bits where it's overlapping you can really build it up quite quickly so i'm going to do that all the way across then i'll add some taller blades Now once we get so far with it, we can even duplicate that layer, go to the transform, flip it horizontally, move it across to wherever we want it to be, and we can just double up the impact of everything we've just created, just really easily. And it just saves a little bit of time. Perhaps just change, distort it slightly so it's not exactly obvious. That way we can build it. I have some taller sections over the side perhaps, just to change it up a little bit. And I'm just gonna Go to my airbrushing medium brush. Again, still on the black. I'm gonna put it to about 4% or 100%. Just blot in this bottom section. I don't really want the bottom edge. So let's just create an uneven bottom edge here just to get rid of that. that instantly makes it look a lot better. Then back to the calligraphy and the script. And we can add some really nice tall grass sections now. So sometimes you're gonna get a section at the top so you can press on more and then let go and you're gonna get that thickening at the top. Perhaps we'll even turn the brush size up to about 7% for that. So press on more, then release the pressure, allow it to go down and get a few of those style in there. And we can really have some tall blades in there as well, some really nice big thicker sections. 
just to really change up the, the feel of it in places. And the beauty is it's a silhouette, so you're not even going to see a separation between that distant section and the grass here. It's just going to really all blend together, which is really nice. And we can just go in and increase the density of grass as and when we feel it appropriate. We can take those two layers, merge down, and once you've got the merge down as one layer, you can just go to the transform and you can just move this around as required. Okay, I'm gonna leave this tutorial here at this point. If you've enjoyed following along, then do make sure to subscribe. If you do have a go, make sure to tag me wherever you're posting it, and I hope to catch you back here soon. See you later.